Okay, here we're going to take a look at computing a one-way ANOVA. So we're going to learn how to do this by hand. And the reason that uh, I focus on hand computations is I think it's always good that you can see where the numbers are coming from. That way, when you're running uh, information in SPSS, when you're analyzing data, uh, you have an idea of what to expect if you understand where the numbers are coming from. So the example I'm going to go through in this lecture is also the same uh, example that's in your note pack, which you can download from my website. If you turn to page 7, you'll see this exact example uh, written out. So in this example, we have four groups, and we could use the, the example uh, that I talked about earlier, where we're doing some type of self-efficacy measure uh, with four different classes, and you'll see the raw data here, and then you'll also see at the bottom uh, the mean of each group, uh, the, you know, x bar 1, x bar 2, uh, x bar 3, and x bar 4 represent the mean of each group, uh, and then you see uh, below that the variance of each group, you know, uh, uh, s squared 1, s squared 2. Remember, s squared uh, is the variance. And then over in the corner, you see a value called the grand mean uh, that we'll talk about later. Um, but it's basically if you took all these scores, you know, 4, 6, 8, 3, 9, 9, 11, 8, 9, 8, 8, 6, 9, 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, you add all those values up and divide uh, by the number of observations, which in this case is 20 and you'll get uh, the grand mean. Now, notice if you add, take 6 plus 9 plus 7 plus 2.4 and divide by 4, you'll also get 6.1. But that only works when you have a balanced design. And remember, a balanced design is when you have the same number of participants in each group. Here we have 5 participants in group 1, 5 participants in group 2, 5 participants in group 3, and 5 participants in group 4. So it's a balanced design. Um, that shortcut won't always work if the design is unbalanced, if we have more, in, uh, more observations in some groups than in other groups. And so it's always good to just take all the values and divide by the number of total observations. We'll talk about that later. So when we do uh, an ANOVA, we always want to identify the null hypothesis. And remember, the null hypothesis says that we don't expect any differences. We expect that everything's going to be equal. And in this case, we're seeing group 1 equals group 2 equals group 3 equals group 4. In other words, all these groups are equal. And so the alternative hypothesis is the opposite. Group 1 will not equal group 2, which will not equal group 3, which will not equal group 4. So... Uh, those will be our, our two hypotheses. Generally, with F-tests or ANOVA, we don't do uh, directional hypotheses. Those are done. So it's just going to be equal or not equal. So um, if there's a statistically significant difference, that would mean that at least one of the groups would be different from the others. In other words, a, a statistically significant effect would indicate that at least one group, and maybe more, are different from the others. There might be two or three groups, so they might all vary from each other. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to compute the grand mean. And it might be helpful just to kind of review some terms that, we're, that, that you might see or some notations. Um, I use x bar j to indicate the mean of a group. And I use x bar dot to indicate the grand mean. The mean of all the means, the mean of the entire sample. So remember, x bar j is just for a specific group, one group out of the four. x bar dot is for everybody in the total sample, all four groups. So the grand mean can be computed by taking all the observations and dividing it, uh, adding them together, add up, add up all the observations and divide it by the number of observations. Uh, this notation shows you that you can take the mean of each group, multiply it by the sample size of that respective group, do that for each of the groups, and then divide it by the total sample size. So if you were to break this formula down, you could see that you could take the mean of group 1 and multiply it by the sample size of group 1, and take uh, the mean of group 2 and multiply it by the sample size of group 2 and take the mean of group 3 and multiply it by the sample size of group 3, and take the mean of group 4 and multiply it by the sample size of group 4, and then divide it by the total sample size, 
that would be everybody in group one, two, three, and four. So, you know, just kind of plug and chug. Remember, in group one, we had a mean of six and uh, a sample, a group sample size of five. So, six times five. Plus, we had a mean of nine and five were in the sample. So, nine times five. Plus, uh, a mean of seven times five people in the group. And then, a mean of 2.4 times 5 people in the group. And we divide that by the number of people in each group. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, so 20. So remember we multiply our values and then we add. So 30 plus 45 plus 35 plus 12 divided by the total sample size of 20 equals 6.1. That's our grand mean. So we're going to keep an eye on that term. So as did before, Rather than compare one group mean to another group mean, like we did in a t-test, we're going to compare each group mean to the grand mean. All right. So in order to compute what we're going to call the sum of squares between, we're going to look at the sum of the differences between each group mean and the grand mean squared. Remember, uh, from our ANOVA theory lecture, there's no negative values. Everything is going to be squared. By comparing each group mean to uh, the mean of the entire sample, or the grand mean, we're going to figure out the amount of variation between the groups. So the formula looks like this, where, you know, uh, again, nj is the number of participants in a group. And we multiply that value by the group mean minus the grand mean squared. So remember, we had five participants in each of the four groups, and then each group had uh, a different mean. We had six, nine, seven, and 2.4. But we only had one grand mean for the entire sample, and that was 6.1. So we already know what our values are. We're just going to plug and chug, chug them to get uh, our sum of squares between. All right. And this kind of gives us what, we, what, what, what might be known as a treatment effect. Okay, so here we're going to calculate the sum of squares between. So uh, remember in our formula, we're going to take the group mean minus the grand mean. We're going to square it, and then we're going to multiply it by the sample size. And we're going to do that for all four groups. So remember, the mean of group one was six. And we subtract that from the grand mean. 6.1, and then we square that value, and then we multiply it by 5. It's important to do it in that order. Parentheses, exponents, and then multiply. So, all right, and that gives us a value of 0.05, and then we do it for the second mean. The mean of group 2 was 9. We subtract it from the grand mean, 6.1, and we square that value, and then we multiply it by 5. That gives us 42.05. And then we take the mean of group 3. 7 minus 6.1, and we square that value, and then we multiply it by 5, and that gives us 4.05. And then finally for group 4, that mean was 2.4, and we subtract it from 6.1, and then we square that value and multiply it by 5, which gives us 68.45. For a total sum of squares between, we just add those values up of 114.6. Okay, so we just computed the sum of squares between, and now we're going to compute the sum of squares within. Remember, the sum of squares between was uh, a between subjects effect. It looked at mean differences. Now we're going to compute an error term called the sum of squares within, which is the sum of the squared differences between each observation, a raw score, and the group mean. In other words, it's a deviation score. It's the same way that we computed a, a standard deviation almost. Um, so for group one, each observation is subtracted by its mean, six. And for group two, each observation is subtracted by its mean, which is nine. And then we square these, these values. So this process is repeated for all the groups. And as you can imagine, with a very large data set, this would be quite long and, and quite tedious. What we're trying to do is we're trying to compare each observation to the group mean uh, by looking at the amount of variation within each group. So um, we're going to do a shortcut to this tedious process. We're basically going to use 
uh, the variance of each group and multiply it by the sample size minus one for each group. Remember, each group sample uh, had a sample size of five, so five minus one is four. And you just multiply that value by the variance of each group. So the variance of group one was 6.5, and we multiply that by four. And then we take the variance of group two, which was 1.5, and we multiply it by four. Now keep in mind, we're not using the standard deviation, we're using the variance. The variance of uh, group three was 2.5, and we multiply it by four. Again, the group sample size minus one. And the variance of group five, uh, excuse me, the variance of group four was 2.8, and we uh, multiply that by four, which gives us uh, a sum of scores within of 53.2. So remember when we did uh, t-tests, we had degrees of freedom, and uh, we're going to have the same issue here. We're going to have degrees of freedom, but um, we're going to have two values. We're going to have a degrees of freedom between and a degrees of freedom within. So um, remember, our the reason for having degrees of freedom is that uh, statistics was based on uh, a population and because we're using samples it changes the distribution a bit it changes our curve and we're trying to approximate our values our distribution to a normally uh, populated distribution a normal population so degrees of freedom are calculated to provide an estimate of the normal curve given the fact that we're using a sample all right, and uh, there's various uh, f formulas for computing degrees of freedom, and dependent on the number of groups and sample size and the type of test. Um, so we'll this we'll we'll show you how how, how we're going to do this for for the ANOVA. Um, both the sum of squares between and the sum of squares within accounted for group sample size. Uh, however. Um, when the variance was computed, the total sample size was accounted for in the formula. Um, so the same must be done when we do an ANOVA. Degrees of freedom have to be computed for both the sum of squares between and the sum of squares within. Um, and what we end up is with a term called mean squares. So when uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how we compute a mean square between and a mean square within. Essentially, in order to compute a mean square between, we take the degrees of freedom between and uh, uh, divide it by the sum of squares between. We've already computed the sum of squares between. It was 114.6. The degrees of freedom between is the number of groups minus 1. Recall we had four groups. 4 minus 1 is 3. So 114.6 divided by 3 is 38.2. That's our mean square between. Pretty simple calculation. Just take your sum of squares between and divide it by the number of groups minus one. If you had five groups, your degrees of freedom would be four. In this case, we had four groups, so our degrees of freedom was three. The mean square within is also a simple computation. Recall that we computed our sum of squares within, and now we're just going to divide that by our degrees of freedom within. Our degrees of freedom within is the total sample size minus the number of groups. Recall that we had 20 participants in our sample. Each group had five participants, so we had 20 participants. We had four groups. 20 minus 4 is 16. So we take our value of 53.2 and divide it by 16, and that gives us 3.325. Finally, we get to our F test. Our F test is the mean square between divided by the mean square within. We already have those values, 38.2 divided by 3.325. And that gives us an F value of 11.49. Now, how do we, uh, what do we do with that? Well, we got our degrees of freedom between and we report it. We say F of 316. Remember, our degrees of freedom between was 3 and our degrees of freedom within was 16. So f of 316 equals 11.49. And we want to know if it's statistically significant. So we have to compare it to a critical value, which you can find in your appendix. You look in uh, the appendix of your text, and um, you look uh, uh, at the degrees of freedom 
uh, between uh, on the row and the degrees of freedom within on the column and you find the appropriate critical value. And remember our golden rule. If our observed value is greater than our critical value, in this case our critical value is 3.239, we have a statistically significant effect. Hence, a statistically significant difference exists somewhere among the four groups. We don't know where that is yet, but we know that we have a statistically significant effect. Okay, uh, that concludes on how we compute uh, an ANOVA by hand. Now, uh, what you should also review is the SPSS tutorial on how to do the one-way ANOVA using SPSS.